available components and manufacturing processes. Is that better? Okay, I'll restart. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. <laughs> for a stall, and we have been designing an open source ventilator for treatment of COVID in developing countries, with particular focus on designing it to be rapidly manufactured at low cost. And that's enabled by having a very simple design that uses just readily available components and manufacturing processes. Um, so this is our ventilator prototype over here. Uh, and I'm going to talk you through it a little bit. So first need to switch it on. And the first thing to know about our ventilator is that it's based on an ambu bag, an ambu bag, uh, or otherwise called a BVM, which is one of these devices that's in here. And these are designed to be uh, used as manual respirators. So usually one person would hold the mask end of this on somebody's face, while the other hand would squeeze the bag and, and manually respirate somebody. But in our design, we very simply just uh, mechanically actuated the bag so it's not pressed by somebody's hand, it's pressed by a mechanism. And we've done that in the simplest possible way, which as you look through this, this uh, transparent top, um, which we've left, we've left transparent as it's a nice sort of intuitive thing so you can see the moving parts. Very simply, we have a motor arm connected to a motor, uh, which is pressing down at the bag with, with high torque. And uh, that is, you know, that's literally it. just an arm connected to a motor. Um, couldn't be simpler than that. Um, and all of that simple mechanism is controlled by our sophisticated control circuitry, which is in the front of the machine. Um, and we have a user interface that, that uh, the user can change different parameters and read different settings. So on one side, we have measured parameters, which are taken, which are measurements that are taken from the ventilation sensors, like the uh, oxygen, the pressure, the flow rate, those sort of things. And on the right-hand display, you can control uh, what the settings are for the machine based on these four buttons down here. It's things like the respiration rate, what oxygen level you want, what sort of pressure you want, um, and any, any alarm limits. So on the, on the side here, these are the alarms. Um, so if anything goes wrong, or if any of the settings go, any of the measure values go out of bounds from the settings, then it will flash a, a light and, um, and sound an alarm, and this is all defined in one of the settings. Uh, not one of the settings, one of the standards. So as well as our device being uh, low cost, open source, and rapidly manufacturable, nice and simple, and, and all those things, we've, all, we've tried our best efforts to make sure that it still can potentially be as safe as possible by making sure that it has the potential to meet with all of the standards that are set by both the MHRO, which is the UK regulatory body, but also the FDA as well, which is the US uh, regulatory body. Um, so, so there's there's the output tube that comes out the side of the ventilator here. So, air is pressed through this bag, and you can inject oxygen into there as well if you want to. Uh, the airflow comes through all of our flow sensors and our pressure sensors and oxygen sensors and things like that. And then the airflow comes out of this tube and goes through into a person's uh, mask or or insulation tube. Um, so. Uh, at that point, it's worth mentioning we have two ventilation modes that we run. One is one is we, we're calling PCV, which is a mandatory ventilation mode, and that's what people were using uh, quite a bit at the start of the pandemic back in March last year. And the term that's off the um, And the mandatory ventilation mode means that somebody has to be sedated. They have to um, they have to be sort of very relaxed, um, so they don't fight against the breathing of the machine because the machine does all the breathing for you. But more, uh, more recently, or, um, or since um, the start of the, of the pandemic, it's been more and more important to have what's called a spontaneous breathing mode, which is what we're calling PSV, pressure support ventilation mode. And that's where the ventilator can sense when the person wants to take a breath and when they want to start breathing out. Um, and that's even more important than having the mandatory ventilation mode. Um, because that means that the people are getting closer to the point where they can, where they can recover. And the, uh, the PSV mode is often used as an intermediary step between the full ventilation mode and the recovery stage. Um, and in a lot of cases, the mandatory ventilation mode is only used as a last resort. So it's super important that we have both of those modes. We have Jonas on the line, Jonas on the line as well, who is going to talk us through a simulation of this user interface because we don't have the final PCB uh, circuit board ready to actually demo it in real life. Uh, we have a simulator, which is uh, which is really useful. It's the next best thing. Uh, so go, go ahead, Jamie. This is, as mentioned, the simulator of the front panel. 
we have on the left hand a display which is mainly for measurements, or showing measurements during inhalation. And on the right side, we have the settings. And uh, we turn on the machine by holding down the select button for three seconds. And we need to do our in the, in the main display. Um, by pressing select, we can go into different modes. But the basic concept in general is that when the arrow is flashing, we can move to different values by plus and minus, pressing select. You go into these values, you can change them, press and select, you go out again. Um, in PCV mode, for example, we have the driving pressure, the respiration rate, and the inhale time as the main values to change. In uh, PS PSV mode, you, we don't have the respiration rate nor the inhale time, but we have an apnea and the trigger value. Um, to start a certain uh, functionality or to, to start running the ventilator, you hold down the standby button. You get to a screen where you have to confirm by pressing select. And you see now the machine is running. We have some simulated values on the left and um, giving you an impression of how it works. Um, values you can change uh, some of the values you can change online like the pressure you can change while in running the mode you can't change to change the mode you would have to uh, go into standby again and you could hear while i was holding the standby new button the machine was giving a kind of alarm sounds so you wouldn't by accident switch over to standby mode the simulation can be found on GitHub on the open event Bristol. Have fun to play with it. Thank you very much, Jonas. That's great. So the next stages for our project is we need to finish the PCB, the circuit board that goes into this, and the software, and then we'll publish the final designs for our prototype onto our website as open source. Again, and we'll also pass those designs onto the two medical device manufacturers that we've been collaborating with, both in Brazil and in India. Thanks very much for listening. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. That was a fabulous um, presentation. I heard a report that the audio may have been bad for some people. Uh, we apologize for that. That video will be made available on YouTube That's later true. if you had trouble hearing it. Um, there are There's a question from the audience uh, and I'm gonna be a bit of a time tyrant and keep things moving here, but we have one minute. Um, Louis Eric Samard asked, how do you calibrate the volume for different types of bags? I don't know if Jonas or Darren can answer that. Yeah, uh, I can help to answer that. Can you, can you hear me okay though? Yes, sir. We can hear you, Darren. Excellent. Yeah, great. Um, so we, we had to make a decision about that quite early in the process of our design um, to do either one of two things. One is we make the ventilator capable of, of working with all different types of bags. Uh, of ambu bags or or we or we um make it work with just one type of ambu bag and then constrain the system down um we decided not to make the ventilator capable of using different types of ambu bags because we we just simply couldn't guarantee that it would work with every type of ambu bag out there because we because it would have been an unrealistic task um so so what i mean is we we could have bought every ambu bag that we could find then tried to incorporate that into our mechanical design but then there could have been a new ambu bag that would have been designed after that stage that might not be compatible with our system because our mechanical design wasn't aware of the different size and shape of the one that hadn't been designed yet, for example. So, so what we decided to do to make sure that we could, you know, make sure the design was is as reliable as it can be is we made our design only compatible with one type of ambu bag. So that so there's no possibility of changing it for a different size. Um, and then that kind of makes everything a lot simpler for us in, in that way. But it is a very readily available bag. It's probably okay. The most thank you, Darren. I'm going to have to cut you off. Um, let me point out that um, uh, we do have the social hour software. I haven't been there because I'm moderating, but um, there's a link on the main website to get there. Um, possibly Darren and Jonas will be there to answer questions now that they've spoken so we can answer further.